Welcome to Bourbon with the Editor. We are uh, Cutting Tool Engineering and we're presenting our, our first live stream Bourbon with the Editor podcast with uh, our special guests from Vargas USA. With me uh, at the bar are uh, Joe McGee, the Senior Applications Manager for Vargas, and uh, Ed Tischler, who is the Applications Engineer. And we're going to be discussing uh, not just, we're going to get back to the bourbon that we're drinking here tonight. <clears throat> but first, we're going to talk a little bit about um, Vargas and find out if anyone out there isn't familiar with uh, this, this cutting tool company, this is uh, a good place to sure. give us a little background. Vargas is a uh, Israeli cutting tool company. We've been making lay down threading, thread mills for over 60 years. Uh, we have a warehouse in Janesville, Wisconsin. And right now we come up with a brand new system of threading. We improve the quality, decrease the cycle time, increase the tool life. There's a brand new system called Mach Supersonic. And with us, Ed's got a very good application at one of his customers. So maybe we can pull up a, a video here and Ed can start talking about his customer in Michigan. Sure. Uh, Ed, is, are we going to, do you want to go to uh, Thomas Sanderson from Adrian Tool Corporation in Adrian, Michigan, or do you want to, you want to discuss any, yeah, should we try um, to get him right now? Yeah. If we, if we have him online, we can go, go that way. Okay. We, we are doing things a little bit different today because uh, we had a last second um, uh, issue that we were going to table the bourbon focus for a minute yeah. so we can get uh, in touch with Thomas Sanderson from Adrian Tool Corporation. Thomas called Ed for help because he was having uh, he had poor tool life. Yeah, he was having, um, he was doing a, a K60 Thompson rod shaft yeah. and he was having poor tool life. Um, he called me in to see if I could help with the application. Um, so we set up a time um, I, I ran through the, the Vargas Genius uh, software that we have available for anybody to use. Maybe we could pull up a video of the Vargas Genius and you yeah. can talk about it, Ed. Yeah, so if we could uh, cue that up, um, I'll walk through. So the Vargas Genius is uh, available online. So in this case, we'll be putting in for a 2-inch um, a 12UN thread. Um, now, the, the application we're going to highlight today is kind of special because our Mach TT, um, it goes to a um, 55 Rockwell. Um, the, the Thompson rod um, actually comes in at 58 Rockwell. So as a Vargas genius, is, you just answer the questions as they um, are available. So you, you can walk through the, the different steps, answer the questions, um, and based on the criteria that you enter in, um, it'll output um, what tools are available to produce that thread. Okay, that, that's a good explanation of what it does. <clears throat> it, it's another thing to, to actually use this and see how much time it can save you. That is correct. Uh, when you're trying to figure out of all the options out there, what's, how are you going to narrow this down? So, so based on the criteria of what um, the, the thread is, if you want a full profile or a partial profile on tool holders, um, whether or not you want a solid holder or a, a coolant through, um, you can start narrowing down the the options and then choose from the list that it gives you. And, and it helps you narrow down the list quickly. Yeah, I mean, that is. Oh, yeah. This, how long? How long did it take you to to get this to this point with uh, with Thomas? So so typically um, on a on a daily. Um, I will go through this Vargas Genius several times to help my customers um, um, find out a tool that they 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 need. Um, but typically, about twenty to thirty seconds for me to type in the criteria and then choose the tool based on what they give me. Okay, we advertise that the, the mock system will reduce cycle time by sixty percent, increase your tool life by sixty percent and give you a 25% cost savings. How did your customer take that when we uh, showed him some of the documentation? Um, well, uh, at first he was, um, you know, of course he was in a situation where- um, the, He was the using current, Mach already. 
Well, yeah, he, he had been uh, using mock um, already on other applications, but not the hardened steel application. Okay. Uh, he was using a standard lay down threading insert, um, and he was struggling to get one bar end. Now, there was 11 and a half inches of thread on that, so there was a lot of cutting. Um, he was doing it in 29 passes um, with his standard lay down. We reduced it uh, to nine, and then uh, the tool life. Um, Instead of struggling to get one end, we ended up getting four bar ends. So, so I think we have a, a video of this tool yes, we actually have. running. So maybe we can pull that up. Yep, this is the application um, of the actual tool cutting. Um, it's about a five second long video. Yeah, right? it's, it's a short video, but um, with the sound. Um, if, you, if, if you're hearing the sound, the sound is sh it's shrill. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> yeah, it, it's not making good sounds, but um, um, the cutter lasted four bar ends. Um, so we produced 44 inches of thread over the four parts. So a lot of cutting. How does the, the improvements of our cutting tools help? All the, what is the benefits and features of this moth tooling? The reduced cycle time, um, fewer passes. Typically, um, we start with half the passes of a standard laid on thread. Um, and then it, if you use our um, um, mock TT holder, it's got the added dovetail um, to help with rigidity. You know, so you're not holding that whole insert in place with just a screw. And then we also redesigned the insert completely. We changed the rake of the insert. We changed the, the finished polish, post polish of the insert. We have a brand new grade and a brand new uh, coating. And then, with, as you talked about, the dovetail, that holds that insert in there and there's no vibration at all. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. I, I, I want to ask about the, I mean, 60% improvement. Uh, that's, that's a pretty huge leap from what was being used. Is that like just because you brought a certain bit of the evolution of your technology with the Mac system to a little bit, you know, made it a little bit better, but in this application, it just did that much better? Or Actually, is this we all... spent two years inventing a new way to make an insert. Uh, when you do threading, you your speed is your material and your feed is your pitch. So there's only other way you can save time in that is reduce your passes and get better tool life. So that was the whole focus. We start to develop this with our engineers in Israel. So that was it right there. That's how you get that huge saving is reducing cycle time, and getting more uptime for your machine, more parts out the door. And and tool for, for Thomas uh, in an event from what I understand, having talked prior to uh, uh, this live stream, it, it was phenomenal uh, and lived up to uh, previous uh, tests of the of the product. Absolutely, yeah. Um, after the first test, um, I don't know if we can queue up the picture of the final product. So the, we ran this test in early February, that and they're right. still running these parts and still continuously getting the same cost savings. Yeah, okay. they they continue to make these um, these bar ends, uh, their tie rods for their um, machines that they make. Um, so, um, they continuously, um, get the same performance out of, out of this product. Yes. Okay. Why don't we just take a pause here? I, I don't know that we're going to get Thomas okay. on, um, but if he does come on, uh, just let us know, uh, in, in the back room there. Uh, it's our first podcast. It's first our first ever. podcast. Uh, and I want to take a, a, a back step. The reason we kind of went out of order that we were planning it was an emergency and, you know, we're just kind of rolling with the emergency in the background. Um, and if Thomas can come back on at some point, we will include him in this. So you can hear directly from the, the end user here, who was one of the, the reasons we wanted to focus on this one for the first sure. one. But let's take a, a quick step back because the way we generally want to start these podcasts and now and in the future is to uh, introduce the bourbon we're drinking tonight. Dennis, you also might as well tell them the story of how this all came oh, about. Yes, that's a good idea. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a fun story because we were drinking bourbon. And uh, <clears throat> actually, I'll, I'll start. We were, we were at West Tech, 
uh, this Ooh. past uh, November. And we were, we just had a meeting after the one of the days and we were just talking about, you know, different ways we could maybe help you guys talk about your, Everybody your, your mock system. Everybody wants to be on social media nowadays and any way you can get it out here, uh, podcasts sound like a great idea. Yeah, so with a, with a, you know, we're sitting at a restaurant. First, you know, Scott, I've met you before. Um, Scott's in the background back here. Say hi, Scott. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a very limited audience. Uh, Alan Richter, the CT editor at large, is, is here. And my brother, uh, Ken, uh, he's throwing tomatoes at us while we speak. <laughs> he's the CFO and the uh, sales rep. But, uh, yeah, so we were, we were, we were talking, and, uh, you know, I'd been thinking about having a, a podcast started here in, in our new offices in Arlington Heights. And originally, the idea was maybe I would just do it behind a desk sitting here. And uh, well, guess what? Um, after watching a few podcasts online, I realized just how boring that might be. So I decided that a bar might be a good way to go. Well, you did a pretty good job. This is a pretty nice bar. Yeah, uh, I think so. And it was exactly what I had in mind and uh, uh, I don't know there's a little message up here um, but yeah this uh, this yeah that this just, bar helped bring the whole thing together they just said Thomas is uh, still having a little bit of a difficulty to get on and he won't be on today oh he so, won't okay right. oh is that what that was okay all right. all right so there's the part that I think you wanted to talk about but let me finish my story Okay. So, you know, we were sitting there at dinner and uh, I did say I was going to make this short, but, you know, <laughs> I, I'm Irish. I can't. <laughs> hey, my and, name's uh, McGee. You know I'm yeah. Irish. Uh, you know, I got to think of something. <clears throat> this is good, by the way. Um, I had met Joe at the, one of the U.S. Cutting Tool Institute meetings, and that's where I actually met Scott as well. And we got to talking about bourbon uh years ago and so when we were sitting down for dinner and i brought up the idea well i want to do a video podcast maybe we could work something in with that and i said i i'm thinking about bringing in a bar what do you guys think about you know doing a podcast behind a bar and the first thing joe what did you say a bourbon with the editor <laughs> and i said oh we got the name right there that's right so, and, and we were drinking Basil Hayden at the time, not to <laughs> plug any particular bourbon, but um, I'm not a bourbon connoisseur uh, or an expert by any means. And nor am I. Uh, I don't, I don't know. And nor consider. am I. Nope. I just enjoy it. All I know is I discovered uh, bourbon and that I liked bourbon when I had a, a sip of Buffalo Trace at my neighbor's house, uh, probably about three, four years ago now. And it's, it's. You know, as far as the whiskeys go, this is my favorite, my favorite brand. And I've started to, to branch out beyond Buffalo Trace. So since uh, this is our very first podcast, I thought I would investigate a little bit. See, what's the first bourbon that was commercially sold, sold in Kentucky? You know, bourbons from Kentucky. We come to find out is Evan Williams. Here it is. 1783 <laughs> was the first commercially sold bourbon in Kentucky, as far as we know. We're not uh, experts, but that's yeah. what it said on Google. Yeah, I'm going to put that right on here because he's got to focus on you right now. So that's that's what they say, it says on Google, and, and we know everything there is. is true. <laughs> oh, yeah. So so we had to go with that first bus, podcast and that first bourbon. So And it is a good bourbon. I'd never heard of this one. I haven't heard of most of the bourbons out there, but... This one was really, as far as I know, it was obscure for me, but it's, you know what, I guess there aren't too many bourbons I haven't really liked, so I guess it's not too surprising that I liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I thought it was very good myself. So it's a, that's how we came up with this idea, and, and uh, Dennis and his team has made a, a very, very nice uh, set here for us to work on. And, and, and so the, I kind of wrap up this part of it just by saying I... The idea behind this is, so I hope this is somewhat entertaining for the audience. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm assuming that there's a lot of my family making fun of me out there right now, <laughs> but I'm hoping that there's a lot of, uh, of machining professionals out there who 
are interested in learning something while they learn a little bit about bourbon and watching some guys drinking at a bar. Because uh, I know that's always fun. Just, well, they made a whole TV show about that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I tried getting Norm here, but yeah. <laughs> so, and our idea is that each podcast we have, we're going to have another uh, type of bourbon, famous bourbon. Uh, I don't know. However, we pick it out. Sometimes it's one of the uh, members here bringing a bottle of bourbon, and that's going to be it. And that with with every episode we do, we're going to try a different bourbon. And you see some bottles behind us. Uh, those are the ones we're starting with. <laughs> <laughs> we got a head start on some of them, but it's a great. It's a this is a great bourbon. I'm, uh, whether it's true or not, it, if it's the first bourbon well, or not. You know, like you said, everything on Google is true. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So cheers, you guys. Cheers, guys. To the to the cheers. first one. To the first one. Ooh. Yeah, that's good. Well, why don't we get? Why don't we? Uh, we covered the genius. Yep. Um, why don't we see if um, we can do that overview? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see the overview. The overview of the Mach TT uh, video, Tim. <laughs> if you can pull that up. So the idea behind the, the Mach TT, um, if you can see the video, um, the standard the standard uh, insert. Um, um, I, I'm not sure how many passes it takes, but the Mach TT typically 15, is is half the passes, um, and it's highlighting the dovetail, the insert, um, the new design to pocket, and how it fits in the pocket. Um, also, when you when you do run our holder coolant through the coolant is available from or is delivered to the cutting edge both from the top and the bottom to get the coolant where it needs to be if you get coolant on your tool right where the cutting edge is it usually gives you about a 15 percent uh, better tool life so that's something when uh, when you run a lot of parts or a lot of difficult parts it's a big cost savings uh, there's uh, there's some points I think that I'd like to to go back over. Sure, I mean, it, absolutely. It, it, there's, you know, when when it comes to Adrian Tool and and the thing that and and beyond Adrian Tool, yeah. One of the things that um, we would been discussing since you got here yesterday, and we did kind of did our little test yesterday. We were talking about the skepticism from some of your customers when you start telling them about some of the performance uh, that results that you've been getting. Yeah, a lot of the times when a customer will um, have an issue or send out a request for a, um, you know for me to visit or to, to provide some, some tool um, information, I'll run it through the Vargas Genius to output a summary and then I can mm -hmm. email that summary to the customer. And a lot of the times they're, they're, they can be very skeptical um, with what I give them because they're like the Adrian tool test, they were doing 29 passes. I suggested that we do it nine and it is 58 Rockwell Thompson rods. So, um, it was skeptical, but they were in a situation where, um, they, they wanted some help. So, you know, and you mentioned that before and you know, 55 to 58, was there any hesitancy by Thomas to, to give it a go, even though it was not no. really according to Hoyle? No, no, they were they were on board. They were in a situation they wanted to see if they could improve the process. So, um, um, the operator that I worked with was Ryan, and he was more than happy to, to change up the tool path. And we ran it at the nine passes, played played around with speeds and feeds a little bit, and then came up with what we ended up getting for bar ends. So, if someone <clears throat> wasn't used to using some of the the other tools in in, in the line. Um, how, how do you have, you, you know, what, what's it taken to, uh, get past that, that disbelief that it, uh, no tool can be that good because let's face it, there's right. a lot of hype out there when, when well, someone's trying I'll to tell, you, what, sell they, you a tool. But when they first brought the tool over from Israel and said, we had this great new design, they didn't even have a name for it yet. And I've been doing this for a lot of years. I'm starting to get a little gray and, uh. <laughs> Uh, we tested some, and it was every bit as good as the designers said it was. So you just cannot uh, imagine how people take this and say, there's no way you can 
reduce the tool pass by half. Right. Yeah. So so a lot of times when I get in a situation where they're they are a little skeptical, I just offer a free test and you know, I'll provide the tools at no cost to the to the end user um, and offer to come in and show them how it works. So the reason I, I stepped off uh, is that we have a, a couple of questions that have come oh, in. Okay. And by the way, uh, thanks for letting me know, Josh. The uh, anytime that somebody wants to, to submit a question, just whatever you know, social media channel you're on or whatever it is, just go ahead and, and submit your question. Uh, they will try to get it out to us, uh, and as long as we are paying attention to the <laughs> the iPad here, we we're gonna right. we're gonna address the question. So we have a question here: uh, Can you remark on what types of threads can be made with the Mach TT system? So right now, uh, we do all the standard UN MPT. Uh, we're filling out this line as we go, but you know, all the most common, the most uh, sold that we sell there is all. Uh, made right now, internal and external, and more and more every day is coming online. It's a, it's a big undertaking. There's hundreds of thread types out there. And uh, so that's what we have right now is the most the top 70% of all threads that we sell. We sell a lot of thread threading inserts. Well, just, just to develop a new grade is a major overtaking. Uh, you got to come up with a new substrate. You got to test it, and you got to do uh, shrinkage for pressing, and all kinds of stuff. So it takes a long time to come up with something new and real inventive like this. Okay, yeah, I there are no other questions right now from from anyone out there listening. But if anyone does, just submit it, and they'll let us know. <clears throat> but I I still I, I know how difficult it can. B, they convince someone who is uh, being sold product. Correct. By, yep. um, and if there's one thing I've learned from uh, Jeff Badger, the grinding doc, uh, he's got a PhD in, in grinding. Uh, he, he, you know, he's basically gone around and consulted with shops all over the, the world. And uh, he tries to help them sift through the by hyperbole um, and bring bring it back down to reality what you can expect out of a wheel and what can it do sure. whatever it is the type so there's when something like this comes along and someone says you're going to get 60 and you're going to go from 29 to, to 9 or whatever it was yep um now thomas was used to that but Kenneth, he was already his expectations were already there and ready to, to test it out. That is correct, yeah. So some other ones, uh, can you talk about any company that um, you weren't able to break that with and then suddenly you got a, you know, they, they had an emergency? Correct, yeah. I've, I've had a customer where they were very skeptical. Um, they were running a, a, an, another insert um, and... Um, it actually took that insert to become out of stock in order to get the call to go right. in to uh, to test. So, you know, when we first started talking about it, I had ordered up the test just to make sure that I had the to insert to cover uh, that thread. But um, yeah, it took three months, um, and then I got the phone call and made arrangements to go over there. So, you got to remember, uh, usually in a manufacturing process, threading the hole is the last process. So you have all this time in making this part with all the other processes. So the threads, if you go oversize, if you break a tap, if you mess up a thread, get bad finish or something, you can scrap the whole part. So when it comes down to the last step in threading, you got to be it right and do it right the first time. So that's what Vargas prides herself on. We can come in, show you how to make those threads the right way. As as most economical as possible, the first time. Cool. Uh, we have a question from Jeff uh, asking if uh, Vargas grades are offered for a wide range of materials. Well, actually, um, the nice thing about the Vargas, um, the Mach TT, is uh, it's offered in BK8, 
and it covers all materials um, from 1018 all the way up to aluminums, hardened steel, one grade, all of them, stainless, oh, yeah. iron, everything. Heat resistant alloys. Yeah. We are uh, a firm belief at Vargas that we want to keep as least amount of inserts grades. So when you have that in your machine and you have the different inserts in the toolbox, all you'd have to do is change the speed and then you put our threading insert in and we'd be good for whatever material you're running. So we keep it limited down to an all-purpose grade for all materials. Well, that's good. I I want to know what Jeff might be drinking tonight. If <laughs> we can get the questions to go in the other order. Uh, by the way, Al, Alan or Scott, if you want to ask something, go ahead. We'll we'll just work it in. If you if something occurs to you. Well, I'm just curious about the uh, the grade. Can you uh, the substrate rather of it? Can can you describe it? And not to give away any proprietary information, but what um, you know might have changed or what sort of uh, Enhancements to the well, yeah. so Alan Richter is in the background here, and you may not have heard that too well. So he's asking if there's been some change in the substrate of of the uh, in the grade what, of of these. What you do tools. when you pick out a substrate, you want to have a binder and then a carbide powder mixed together, make it tough and hard, so it would withstand any materials or the hardness of the material. So that's a very tight ratio you have to work on for many months. So that's what we've done here with our new v, VK8 grade. It's tough, but it's still hard. And then we have a nano coatings. Uh, the coating really performs when you get it to the right heat where the coating can protect that carbide. So it's a long process with many, many, many hours of testing to come up with a new grade and a new substrate with a new grind all in one. Well, um, does that answer your question? Really? Yeah, and is this uh, is this uh, centered or uh, I mean, uh, no, this, ground? This centered is a fully ground. ground. He asked if it was a centered insert or a ground insert. Yeah, and uh, all our uh, mop tools are fully ground insert. They are for high precision, high high uh, low tolerance, uh, accurate machining. So uh, that's what this is for. And th this is why I wanted Alan in the in the the cheap seats here because <laughs> he's he's so experienced sure uh john is wanting to know can the mac run on my machine with low rpms absolutely you know we we tailor this to to pretty much any machine um depending on what you're running um i think you know with a little bit of testing um depending on how low he has to go and you know diameter and and whatnot, um, you know, it, I think it would be something at least to try. Yeah, you know, once we, when we develop a new grade, we have to look at, some people don't have the newest machines. They don't go out and spend a million dollars for every machine. So you gotta have a grade that works on a, an older machine with lower RPMs and lower coolant pressure. Also, you gotta have a grade and a geometry that works good for the brand new machines on high coolant pressure and ultimate speeds how, how low could you go well depending on the diameter you know because surface feeds based off of that so a lot of the times um you know i can't there's not like any magic number of how low we could go but um you know if he can maybe add in um um some criteria like diameter, thread pitch, and so stuff John, like that. if you're still out there, give us some more details, and we may be able to better answer, the, uh, yeah. fully more fully answer your question for you. Yeah, but uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean it, it can't be that black and white. So no, yeah. no, there's 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 a lot of criteria in this. Um, so um, the more we know about the thread that he's producing and material, that would help as well. That goes back to the whole reason for the genius. Uh, that is existence. correct. Yeah, yeah. The, a lot of times, uh, the genius can answer a lot of the a lot of the questions. Oh yeah. So um, the question the, the the question that just came in was um, explain the dovetail. So our insert has a dovetail um, ground on it. Our insert um, fits into our our tool holder, um, and there's a dovetail ground into our tool for maximum rigidity and to top, help 
top corner. Yeah, and to help take some of the pressure off that screw. Um, so the, the the idea behind the um, the dovetail is to take that pressure off the screw, which would help us um, take less passes. It's it's able to um, uh, take the stress off that screw. So. Yeah, I and I saw the way that was done, and and you have a video that shows kind of the the difference between that and one without that. that we'll dovetail. see if we can get Tim to queue up. A, yes, Tim, the, if can you can bring, if, why don't you just bring up that video that we showed earlier? So this is just going through the difference between a standard insert and the mock um, of how many passes the mock has done. The standard tool is still going. Um, and then here's the dovetail feature of it. The screw goes in. Um, I believe it highlights the the um, the added support on that insert. You could see it there. Yeah. Yep. And maybe, yeah, here too. Yep. There you go. That's where the dovetail is to help support that insert in heavy and deep cuts. All inserts vibrate in a pocket. Every Every insert, no matter what kind of pocket you're talking about. So if you can reduce the vibration in the pocket, the more you can reduce it, the better tool life, better quality of threads you're going to make. So after long research, we came up with this, a dovetail on the top, you clamp it in there, it pushes it down tight into the pocket on all three sides of the insert. Is it okay? Oh, is this line offered for Swiss applications? Yeah, we have a full line of holders for the Swiss. Yes. Yep. So is that? Um, I mean, when you're talking about how many? Oh, so we. I are. believe. I believe we go down to three eighths, uh, ten millimeter, 10 and millimeter. then up. So five eighths or half inch, five eighths, and then twelve millimeter. So we we do a full Swiss uh, application for this as well. And, and Capto, yes. I think it's time to drink you guys. <laughs> I think it's time. Um, and I don't, uh, we haven't heard back from John, um, at least not yet. But, um, you know, that this is uh, just over two years, yeah. right, out on the market. And uh, we did a little video at IMTS um, early, early after its its debut, right? Yeah, I'm I think that was IMTS 2022. Yes, I believe so. Was it? And uh, that's when it was introduced. Yeah. And uh, at that time, it was brand new. Uh, testing was hardly completed then. And uh, so, but now we have quite a few test sites. We have quite a few customers across the whole United States, Europe, everywhere running this. And uh, we are still uh, amazed of how the tool or cost savings. The tool life and the reduction of cycle time this tool produces. It's a better every year. The more we run it, the better it is. And when uh, when I was talking to Scott and Joe in Long Beach, California, at the West Texas last fall, you know they were talking about different ways of getting the word out about this tool and this technology and all the uh, basically success stories or case studies that they had. And I think we thought at first uh, that we were going to do one a month, <laughs> something like this. But uh, the, the the truth is, there are they have customers willing to step up and talk about this with us in in, in future episodes uh, with Vargas. We are going to touch on other product lines, sure. Uh, and we might come back to this one at, at some point in the well, future. We definitely but want to want to uh, showcase our uh, mock thread mill. It's a really exceptional, uh, fast thread milling. Mm -hmm. Also, we have some uh, of our really stable lines, MITM, uh, solid carbide thread mills, our uh, and many Pro HD, from, we can uh, thread mill 62 Rockwell. So we have a lot of uh, products out there that maybe not everybody knows about, but we're going to start focusing on each one, on each one of our podcasts. <laughs> Hopefully we... We do a lot of them. I'm not sure. That uh, hey, seems a lot of fun. I'm I'm game. I mean, I and and you know what we're doing here right now is just finding out about it and mm -hmm. learning whatever we can and doing so in hopefully an entertaining fashion. How 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 am I doing so far, Alan? Oh, doing well. Okay, all right. And, uh, 
And I uh, want to tell all our watchers out there, we will get better at this. <laughs> yeah. This is our first time, and uh, I am not a professional in front of a cam camera, if you know what I mean. So we will get better. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're doing the best we can with our made-for-radio uh, faces. And, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I speak for myself, okay? <laughs> but uh, And like I said, each, each, each episode, we'll have a new bourbon to talk about. And uh, I will try to uh, investigate and get some little tidbits about how that bourbon was made. Just so you know, the, they, they provided a, a little gift glass of the Vargas. You saw it in the opening <laughs> intro. Mm -hmm. And we are using those glasses as we, <laughs> as we sit here and talk. We will st keep taking questions. Looks like there might be one coming in. So John says the thread is half inch 12. Oh, what, what does that mean? Half inch 12 UN in thread in steel. Okay. Half inch 12. I'm not reading the shorthand oh. too well. Maybe it's supposed to be half 13. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, is it supposed to be half inch 13 UN steel, John? Or uh, is, well, is that. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't I'm, matter. We can yeah, make we, any size you want. If right. It, okay. If it's a 12 pitch, yeah. uh, we'll take a, a 12 pitch insert and we can make it. Uh, it doesn't matter what size you got. We can do all the way up to uh, 100 TPI down 1500 to 1500 RPM. Oh yeah, ah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ed, that. Ed says absolutely. And there you have it. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, it's not, that wouldn't be a problem. Um, if you get, you know, if you only had 50 RPMs for something like that, that would, that'd be where the, the problem would be. Oh, okay. you know, there, there, there are limits to, to things, but you know, 1500 RPMs would be fine. So to, I hope that helps, John. I, I appreciate you getting back to us with that. And, and if he work. has a, a, a uh, more needs more detail, uh, just go to vargasusa.com. Send us a message there, and we'll get one of our application engineers. We'll get in touch with you and help you with it. I'm or sure Ed would be do. happy to be. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that um, and this is this is our first time doing this. Uh, I. You know, I, I would like to hear from anyone watching if you think this is a good time of day for this because we, we've we done webinars in the past and we're still going to do webinars uh, during the day. Uh, but it seems to me that uh, that's taking time away from your, your jobs out there and during the middle of the day. I thought this might be a good way for people who might not otherwise get a chance to learn directly from some of the companies and these experts, such as I have right in front of me, uh, about some of the new technology that's out there. And this isn't brand new, but we're learning about its potential and its capabilities now, really, for the first time. Every day, every day we learn something new about how this new product will perform. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Jeff. Um, the question came in from Jeff. <laughs> Will viewers get a chance to test samples of the bourbon? Uh, <laughs> we're talking about doing that maybe at IMTS. Uh, we're going to bring this, we're going to bring a, a, a version of this to IMTS at our booth uh, and, this uh, year. <laughs> yeah, this year. Yeah, this September. year is IMTS. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to keep our theme of the bourbon in this, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, come see us in person at IMTS. If you can't get a hold of your Vargas rep uh, in your area, come see us. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and and uh, <clears throat> stop by our booth. If they don't let us bring bourbon onto the floor, we'll fake it and bring apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're, we are doing something like that. We'll, oh, we'll mock TT via IMTS. Yes, it will. It'll be a, a, a focus feature at IMTS and on a machine running in our booth is uh, how we understand we're trying to. It's hard to do when you up at IMTS to get everything we want. But right now we're hoping to get a, uh, a machine that will be running in our booth to show off the, uh, the possibilities of the mock system. That. You know that's a good point. I mean, you've had a, you've had a number of regional shows, uh, and you know the SME shows, West Tech, East Tech, last year, um, and 
by the fall, by the West Tech, you had amassed all this case study success story, you were trying to kind of figure out how to get this, the word out. So the word of mouth has been amazing. Each tool show we go to, we have more and more people hearing about this. And I need a test insert. I need someone to call me. I need somebody to come show up in my shop. We have a huge problem on a large production run. We need to cut cycle time. We're, we're getting more and more calls, more and more. It's, it's, the word is spreading out there. It just takes time. When you have results like this, a lot of people don't trust exactly what they see on print or hear until you come prove it to them. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, and when you're talking about some of the extreme changes. Yeah. Yeah, they are extreme, but. Um, we have known in a couple of cases, uh, we came in and, and helped them because they ran out of a special insert and our mock would fit the bill. And then the customer did not have to buy two more new legs. We got the, the parts out the door and they were still running six days a week, but they didn't have to buy two more legs. So that was a huge savings. What kind of savings is that? I don't think that probably seven hundred thousand dollars in machine. I I don't know. I haven't bought a machine for a while, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's going to be that area. I mean, when we talk about buying a machine in this industry, for anyone who's not familiar with manufacturing and machining and metal cutting specifically, some of these machines are more than a million dollars. I'm not oh. talking about specifically something that you for could turning, get small but, tool room lathes that. And and uh, machines that are a hundred thousand dollars, you can go way over a million. It depends on what's your budget and what is your production rate you need to run. You know, if you need to run X a number of pieces per minute, that machine's going to cost you some money. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Oh. Wow. Can I get someone from Vargas to come look at my application in Michigan? I think that's an I think that's a no brainer. Yeah, that's a no brainer. That is where I'm from. So if you can provide um if you can provide where you're at and what you need, um I will send it in there, then we'll yeah. we'll take your information and someone will get a hold of you. Yeah. You know, this is great. I I really was wondering how, you know, the interaction would be with the audience and I, I just think this is such such a an easier atmosphere for our audience to just kind of chime in with a question sure. and the guys in the control room back there are, are feeding us the questions um, that, that come in. So it's, I mean, these are, these are good questions. Oh yeah, and I, absolutely. And sure I'm is. just happy that, you know, this part is actually doing what I was hoping it would do. Yeah. Uh, well, that, at, at Vargas, we believe in what we tell people and what we sell. So we will bring the tools in and test them. We will make them work if possible exactly what we said we we are determined to come in and help our customers one to, one machine at a time or 50 machines at a time whatever you got we will come in and help you cool what, what is this oh we're getting a Oh, I'm not sure if the, if everyone's seeing that or not. <laughs> <laughs> the guys in the in the back room. Yeah, the guys in the back room are playing around with. I should maybe be they've looking. been drinking. I yeah. should too. Oh, yeah, by the way, I should you know, I should mention that they are having some bourbon while we're while we're doing this. <laughs> so I hope you've been listening to this whole thing and not listening to like a Britney Spears album or something. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with Britney Spears. I'm just saying, you know, you get it. You can be doing a lot of things right now. We really appreciate you being with us uh, as we sip our bourbon and uh, and discuss this industry. Sure. I mean, for me, this hopefully can lead to getting more people interested in careers in manufacturing, just getting the word out about manufacturing because it's... Well, manufacturing is, is the place you want to be. If you, uh, maybe you don't want to be a doctor or a lawyer. But if you go into manufacturing, you make good money, good benefits. Uh, they train you on the job. Uh, it's amazing the offers and the opportunities you have once you realize that manufacturing is not a dirty, nasty job that used to be back in the 1950s or something. It is a great, great career that yeah. I've had for many years. Yeah, it's, it's um, when I first 
started covering this industry in 2007, you know, I, I, I think I was under the impression that, you know, machine shops were like greasy, dirty, you know, like, you know, you need to be prepared to, to don't go in there with your best clothes on, you know? Sure. And, you know, there are some shops that are still a little bit like that, but the vast majority at this point are automated, computerized, the CNC is everywhere. Even if they still had manual machines, it's clean. It's really clean. And it's really safe. It's environmentally safe. Uh, they, they do everything possible to uh, make sure that the parts come out of there are, are to standard. You never know if that part's going to go into an aircraft or into a human body or where it's going to go. So everything, when you manufacture something, it's all about how pride you make your your parts and everything's got to be correct so there's a there's some pride to it too and and as you know i've talked about before the just the workforce shortage uh the the, the shortage of just skilled workers for sure. this for this industry is it's kind of slowing down a lot of shops i mean does they just don't have people they can bring in and, and pick up the slack and and so yeah they're turning to automation but even with automation, there are so many jobs that are going unfilled to basically run the automation. Right. I mean, I might oversimplify here, but well, you know, every robot out there, somebody's got to make the parts to make that robot. So, you and, know, uh, and, and the, the automation can come to the mundane job, the re the repetitive job, but you got to have machinists, operators, and people who can make the parts to make the robots, to make the parts. And it's, these are full-time jobs, well-paid yes. jobs, full benefits. And it's it's not like you, if you don't know what you're going to do after high school, it's not like you have to say, okay, well, I'm going to become a machinist. You you, But you can. And after a few years, if you decide, hey, maybe I want to be an engineer and a help programmer. help design yeah. some of these sure. tools down the road, they probably will, whoever's, whoever you're working for, they'll probably help you with your college education at that point, sure. which uh, to me is, is a lot better than going to a four-year university, not knowing quite what you want to do uh, and trying to figure it out as you go and spend that much money. Um, it wasn't a big deal when I went to college. Uh, but it'd be we'd be hard pressed to go and become a journalist these days, uh, and have to pay that kind of money uh, afterward. Uh, getting that I, first job, I didn't know school. what I wanted to be when I came out of high school, and I uh, I came went to a factory <laughs> and got onto an eight year apprenticeship to be a machinist, and I've been doing that forever. That's all that I've ever done. It's a great career. Served me well. And I raise the family and everything. It's a really, really good career. Well, it is. I and and you know we we talked about it uh, in the past on on our own. And I'll be talking about that again, so I, I won't bore people too much right I don't now. Think we can never talk about it enough. No, we really can't. If anyone is interested in in manufacturing as a career, please reach out to me or anyone in the industry, Vargas, anyone, and find out how you might you know, learn more about what careers are available. You can go to our website and take a look at some of the different um, needs out there. There's so many needs. I mean, there's some statistics out there saying there's going to be like 2 million open positions, unfilled positions. Sure. Uh, what was it, by year 2030 or something like mm -hmm. that? Uh, it, it's just, there's just currently unfilled positions. Just know that. And yeah. if you just go out there and start looking for, if you're having trouble right now, knowing what to do, you really can't go wrong trying your hand at making metal cutting. I mean, it's, it's the most mesmerizing thing you can watch. As you saw in some of these videos, that was slow motion videos. The, the sparks fly and the chips are peeled off. It's amazing to watch. Sure. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great industry to get involved in. Just, just a lot of fun for me. I think we should probably think about wrapping up. I, I want to make sure we've covered everything that we should cover here today. Well, you know, I think we covered everything, and uh, 
we talked about how ending this, I guess we just say it's time to pour another drink. <laughs> you know what? Let's get let's get ourselves some. Oh, I wait. Oh, it's wait, right wait. here. <laughs> <laughs> I got turned around. <laughs> this isn't. This is my. Uh, let's just say this is my second bourbon. Okay. Do you want to go with that? I'll go with that. Yeah. Here we go. Thank you, Dennis. And, uh, Anybody in the background there? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> We're going to come on. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're on camera. <laughs> Scott. There you go. This is good stuff. It's a lot different from the Buffalo oh, Trace. Thank you. Not. Not horribly. So I let me just say thank you. Thank you to Vargas for helping get this vision off the ground. Without you prodding me and us working together, this would not have happened. I started working on this set uh, in November and it, it's, it's, it's done now. We're here. <laughs> Yep. And our, we've got our first one under the belt. Right. Thank you, guys, to you. Cheers. Yes, thanks. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Cheers. And uh, we can begin working on our next Bourbon with the Editor. Oh, absolutely. Everyone out there, uh, if you if you have a favorite bourbon, you can share what that is, and maybe we'll we'll drink one on that for that uh, for the one of the next episodes and discuss sure. that. Maybe I'll do a, a few bourbon with the editors or you know do they use bourbon for like coolant <laughs> no. no they don't you'd get a lot more people working uh, in manufacturing yeah. that's right <laughs> might you be get a fire that, hazard you get yeah. two million people real quick <laughs> yeah. yeah all, all right. right well thanks dennis thank you yeah joe thank you ed thank uh you. thank you scott alan josh mcgee uh it's joe's son in in the control room with my son and Will Nash, uh, also from, uh, from, from Vargas. Vargas, in the control room, helping us uh, get this thing off the ground and having it run as, well, I don't know, I thought we did okay yeah. for our first one. Yeah. Uh, we, Very we, nice. We maybe had a we'll, get some com we'll get some comments and maybe yeah. we can uh, figure out the little rough edges a little yeah. bit. Yeah, let us know what you, any suggestions anyone has, let us know. And uh, thank you. Thank I, you. I think we, we can wrap things up there, Tim. So long, everyone. Uh, keep the uh, keep the interest alive out there for us. Let's spread the word. Keep the highball glasses clean. <laughs> and and again, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Mm.